Well, I'm going to begin, uh, Liam, just by saying, I mean, firstly, I mean, the film's excellent. I think I've actually got a, a quote on the poster that just says the word beautiful. Mm. Now, for a film that's effectively about a man who wanders around caving <laughs> people's heads in with a hammer, the fact that it, that quote still stands up is quite incredible, really. I mean, how did you go about finding a kind of a, a beauty to this kind of brutality? Oh, I don't, I don't really know. I think I was just always trying to find intimate moments with this character and, um, and the... You know, although it's this one thing and it might seem, you know, it's a genre movie and it's, it was a B novella and it's quite pulpy and stuff like that. There was a lot of humanity in it, and you know, it was like, um, he lives with his mom. I think that Joaquim probably like said, there was tender moments of sort of black humour and we didn't want to you know, ever feel like just a one-dimensional kind of thing. You know, the, the guy goes in and gets the girl. It's The guy's a mess, you know? <laughs> Can't even save himself in a way, you know? And so that's where we started from, I think, yeah. I'm talking about subverting kind of expectations. I love this sort of soundtrack as well, like Angel Baby being in there and stuff. What, what, what sort of stemmed that idea to have mm. that particular sound to kind of to, 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 to be, provide the kind of soundtrack to this movie? Uh, well, with that, it was just, it was a track I quite liked. And it was the first, I just kind of think I remember just trying it, like just like, I was like, oh, I'll just try that first, you know, but it's just temp, you know? And then nothing else fit. Ever again, we tried so many different things. I thought I'll do something more modern, or, and that just felt like a disco, and it just felt wrong. And I think I might have made a mistake, or Joe jo and I were editing, and also I did some tests. But you know, I, I, it was like time slices came out, you know, um, and I was like, oh, this is brilliant because like normally the the music kind of like papers over the cracks, or like everything's still put together, it's all smooth. This was like showing a kind of when you when you actually kind of. Um, go moment to moment and cutting those little bits out and somehow it's something really, really disturbing about it, you know, um, although you don't really know what it is at first, so it's, it does something to your brain. Um, but yeah, that, that track was one of those ones where the first thing I tried and it, it was right, yeah. And I mean, I mean, Joaquin, obviously, it goes without saying, is incredible in the role. And you can't, you just can't imagine anyone else doing it. I mean, yeah. to a point where was he always in your mind when, when, when writing it? And, and also, I mean, had he not been able to do this or say he rejected it for some reason? I mean, could it even have gone ahead in the same way that it, it has done? I don't know. For me, I just kind of feel like I telepathically willed him into the film or something. Because <laughs> to me, it was like, it was the first time I'd ever went. I mean, I, normally I'll write the character a bit more and I'll kind of find it. And, and this was the first time... But I was like, it's got to be him, like, and here he is, and here's a picture stuck in my computer, and you know he's going to be in this movie. And whenever anyone asked me, any producers or whatever, who do you want to cast? I'd be working Phoenix, and then they'd ask me again, I go working Phoenix and working Phoenix, like, and then I figured out it's like, oh god, it's because he doesn't do any press, like, <laughs> 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 maybe they want someone that does press. But I, I, for me, it was always a no-brainer. But it was a, but yeah, like, I, I don't know, I kind of. He's really choosy, so he could have easily said no, but just somehow I, I, I didn't, I thought it would work. I, I, I don't know, I didn't think about it, I just knew it was him, you know. And it sounds like I mean, you had an incredible experience. Yeah. I, know, I know you've obviously, you've referred to him as your sort of cinematic soulmate. And so, <laughs> I mean, what, what was it about your collaboration with him that, that, that was so special? Well, it was completely terrifying at first. I mean, we'd never met each other. Um, you know, I'm turning up, he turned up like, when the crew turned up, like whenever it was six weeks or before, we'd heard, we didn't have a long prep. Um, and he was kind of physically, you know, manifesting at that time. It was like really crazy. But I don't know, just the more, obviously, you, like every relationship, you just kind of find, you're finding your feet with someone. And um, I don't I just felt that like he really worked on instinct, which is something I think I do. Like, and so there was something like when it felt wrong or cheesy or, you know, I used to walk through the scenes because I've never done action sequences. I've never done anything with a gun. I was like, Right, okay, does this feel like CSI or like what? I mean, not, not that they're not, the, you know, the people love those kind of things, but it, we were kind of like, you know, you're living in a movie kind of language, you know? And so I think he, th he kind of finds it hilarious that I, I think I went with him. I was trying to go with him, and I think it was a point where we were in, in the Russian bass and it was freezing in the water, it was disgusting, and it was just a really boiling hot summer as well. It was like you could pass out in the temperature. And um, I knew the water was. I don't know what was in that word, but it wasn't good, <laughs> you know. But it was also sub-zero, and I think 
I was like, I have to see what it feels like, because I could see he was in pain, and um, and just walked in, and he, you know, thought that was it. That was that kind of broke the ice the most, like, you know. I'd like to see you direct an episode of CSI. I reckon you'd probably <laughs> I'd like, yeah, maybe who knows, you know. <laughs> and you say I was read as well that obviously you, you allowed him quite a lot of room to improvise, which yeah. meant you had a lot of footage. Enough, but you said at one point enough footage, cut footage to make potentially an additional three movies. I mean, have you ever mm-hmm. contemplated or thought about doing anything with that with that material, that content? You know, even if it was just putting it on the DVD or something or even yeah. perhaps releasing something that does feature a lot of the, the kind of the, the scenes that yeah. didn't make it there was a I mean what I guess when, when I say that what I mean by that as well is that there were so many textures to his performance I mean, sometimes it was funny sometimes it was like oh my god it's like the devil's coming you know like it was a day this one shot he was walking I thought oh my god I was like someone's coming to take my soul you know then he would do something like super unexpected like punching the dirt. I don't want to do so many spoilers, but he'd do something really unexpected and it was just like, it always kind of kept you in the, and the edit in a way, just we edited it in that way where you just never knew what to expect, you know? But certainly there's some really beautiful scenes like with him and his mum, they're funny and sweet and I'd like, maybe we didn't use them because it was a tonally the same as something we had, but they were beautiful. Um, and you could have done a Harold and Maude type film, just like, you know, the guy hangs out with his mom, mm-hmm. but, yeah, I, I'm sure we'll put some of those scenes, like, in some of those little sequences, like, you know, as part of the extras. But yeah, yeah, there was there was a lot of really different dimensions of that character to choose from, which made it a br- brilliant in the edit, you know. That's why he's so amazing as well. It was like, because we were shooting fast, you know, and some things were one take, you know, so... And you've described the film yeah. uh, as being about, uh, in, with some regard, a sort of white men in power that are beyond reproach. And I was just wondering, with that in mind, I mean, th- how does that give this t- the timing of the release even more pertinency, given obviously what's going on at the moment in, in Hollywood and in, in, in the industry? I get. I, I didn't know. You know, I suppose we made it last year, like mm. in summer, so you know, no one could predict what's happening or going on. You know, but I think all these kind of, I think I was watching a lot of documentaries about power, about you know, about. When, how we don't really know where we are in the world, and people don't know, know how to trust in the same thing way. Like anyone, like or the, like the, um, they don't trust politicians anymore. Like they don't, you know, like there's it's a kind of sh- a strange um, time where you know, like there's there's not, there's not a black or a white anymore. It's not a good or a bad. You know what I mean? Like so, I think that kind of influenced things more than anything. Um, just watching tons and tons of documentaries because I'm not in social media. You know, like just that's my way of kind of my window in the world. You know. Um, and so, I, yeah, I, I, I guess those those power structures are starting to crumble, and they're just like, but it wasn't. I didn't, I didn't have any of that in mind when I made this. I just like, I guess I was just looking at the world, and, you know, looking around me, you know, um, seeing what, um, what a crazy time it is right now, you know. I'm just finding very quickly. I mean, what's what's next for you? And please tell me when we've got to wait another six years for the next yeah. one as well. Oh no! I don't. <laughs> Would you? We wanted to keep shooting. We just went on and on, you know. No, I have um, got a lot of things, a lot of exciting things. Um, I guess I just want to start writing again. I started writing because I'm. I've been, to, you know, like made a film. The film's been in different places. It's like, um, you know, it's opening in America soon, so I go and do that. But while I'm like on planes and stuff like that, just like it's good to start writing because it's just. I'm just really into being in the creative process, and I think what I is as well. When it, when a movie ends for him, when it's the end of the shoot, and I think that's why he's not so interested in the press side. It's just like that's the work that's him done, you know, in a way. And, and when I finish the cut, it, for me, it's like your baby's born. You need to think of the other things. So just excited about oh, quite a few projects coming up, and and also having a bit of a like a kind of time to have my life, you know, like. And, just be um, not a filmmaker for a while, just like, you know, look around, see things, you know. So yeah. a couple of months to, to chill, I think, yeah, yeah, as well. Thank you so much for your time, I much appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.